go. Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I saw a video that was making the rounds on the Flat Earth Circuit from a retired F-16 pilot who claims that the Earth is flat. And this was on Taboo Conspiracy's channel. Now, I've left a couple of comments out here, and Where's Wally and several others, uh, Sean Hawkins, have made some response videos on it. But they looked at it primarily from the flat earth aspect. Unfortunately, this is not going to be one of those kinds of videos. The thing that I'm going to stress today is something that those of us that served in the military are very peculiar about, and that is stolen valor. This is somebody claiming to be a retired Air Force fighter pilot who clearly is not a retired Air Force fighter pilot. Now, while this individual Mike may have been in the service, he certainly was not doing what he claimed that he did. You know, I'm proud of what I did in the Army. I was a combat medic, I was commissioned, and served as an officer. My guest today is also a former enlisted man. With 11 years service as an enlisted sailor, obtained a commission and became a fire control specialist. So why don't we go ahead and introduce my guest today, and that's Schrodinger's cat. Cliff, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, thanks, Bob. Uh, one quick correction. I was a surface warfare officer, and we did uh, deal with fire control, but uh, a fire control specialist is an, an enlisted uh, rate. So I did 11 years uh, enlisted as an avionics tech, working on um, mostly the E2C Hawkeye and F-14 Tomcat. And when I was an officer, I was the surface warfare officer. So I was mostly uh, drove uh, the ships and was responsible for the safe navigation and handling of the ship. And then I went on from there to the expeditionary and special warfare side. And uh, that's where I retired from. Okay. Well, one of the reasons that I wanted to bring you on was, you know, we both know a little bit about the military, but more importantly, I'm a pilot and you're a sailor. And this particular video and the comments that follow it are very heavy into that. And people are putting out um, information that they're giving off as being experts in a field because they were, you know, they were an army seal. And a lot of people out there don't realize that this is so easy for us to pick up on. And I wanted to point a few of them out. I want to especially start off with this Mike, who is this quote unquote retired F-16 pilot. So let's go ahead and have a listen to this video until we see something that really needs to be addressed. And then we'll try and put it together at the end, and then we'll go through some of the comments. Sound good to you? Sounds excellent. Let's do it. All right, so let's go ahead and hit this. I received an email from a retired F-16 pilot whose name is Mike. His new YouTube name is F-E Viper 16. A good name, so watch for him in the comments. I spoke to Mike on the phone today, but he wishes to remain anonymous, and I will certainly honor that. Yeah, no kidding. Again, if you are a professional and would like to talk to me about the unique perspective of the Flat Earth related to your expertise, please email me at tabooconspiracy at gmail.com. I will always keep your information confidential if that is what you want. I do hope this information will lead to more flat earth investigations because these radar systems and the aircraft using them are fascinating and the flat earth evidences they introduce are indisputable. I wish I could share my full discussion with Mike because it was awesome as this retired Air Force pilot confirmed that he definitely flew over a flat and stationary earth and that none of the systems of his aircraft were designed with the curvature in mind. Well, my first thought is that uh, this guy, he, he, he got an email from someone claiming to be um, an F-16 pilot and without much due diligence just ran with it. Uh, he could be getting trolled or maybe he just got an email and and said, I don't care. It sounds good to me. I'm going to put it on my channel. Well, the problem that I've seen in the flat earth is lots of times people do troll them. And that is they'll send them an email or something or other that tells them the story they want to hear. And they just run with it. They don't bother checking any of it. And I think that with very minimal checking, Listening to this guy's story and checking some of the stuff out will avoid him debunking his own video in his video, which we're going to see here in a little while. 
The other thing is, you notice how he had to sit down and add that, oh, it was a fisheye lens, not a curved earth. Well, that's not a fisheye lens, I don't think. Do you? Um, no, and I don't think anybody is, is claiming that that's evidence of curvature one way or the other uh, from, from that altitude. I think what we have here is a case of, um, remember when JM Truth got trolled by negative exponents, uh, sent him an email under a pseudonym, and JM Truth ran with it without doing the, the least bit of uh, background checking on it. Seems like we may have that situation happening here. I think you're right. But let's listen to a little bit more because it's kind of fun. Now, I might make some mistakes here, and I do apologize for that as the information was complex for me. But Mike did say that he might stick around and answer your legitimate questions in the comment section. Yeah, that'll an be F-16 interesting. An F-16 can fly up to 1,500 miles per hour and may be intercepting another craft flying in the opposite direction at the same or a different altitude at similar speeds. Breaking it down, 1,500 miles per hour is 250 miles in just 10 minutes. As Mike discovered, the paramount problem with the globe is 8 inches per mile squared. The infamous and quite accurate formula that calculates the alleged curvature drop if the globe were real. That easy to understand formula absolutely destroys the globe because no one has seen or accounts for that insane amount of curvature drop. Oh, Cliff, the infamous 8 inches per mile squared. Um well, yeah, yeah, we all know that, that that's not the formula. It's a pretty good approximation. Uh, it doesn't do anything to debunk the globe. And for someone who says that he's a pilot to, uh, to insinuate that that does, it just doesn't make any sense. And having seen this video, we're going to hear Taboo Conspiracy explain exactly why it's not a problem for there to be this much drop over the distance. And then he's just going to hand wave dismiss it and just carry on uh, saying that this is some sort of issue that nobody has uh, discovered up until him and this fake pilot. So Admiral Chester Nimitz didn't uh, catch this. Uh, Bull Halsey, Admiral, never caught this. No, None of the jet pilots in the history of aviation have ever, have ever caught this until some random F-16 pilot sent an email. To a YouTube conspiracy theorist. And, right. you know, the interesting thing about this is that all navigation and ballistics are based on a curved rotating Earth. So how did we ever hit battleships when we did battleship to battleship? You know, how did how did... How did we do long range artillery? None of that makes any sense. But you know, the best part about watching flat earth videos is they debunk themselves right in it. Do you see the problem with this particular picture right here? Now we're in the cockpit of an F-16, which is a closed environment. Recall the reason that, you know, we don't get blown to the back of the airplane is because we're in an enclosed environment in a passenger plane, right? And the outside forces that are acting on us don't don't act on us. Of course, you stand out on the wing, it's different, but for different reasons. Do you notice that guy's oxygen tubing? Yes, uh, did, I, I did. Did anybody notice that it, it started off hanging down, and when he inverted, somehow, miraculously, the density changed, and it started hanging up? Yes, and that's uh, something that I'm, I'm sure that you're aware of, uh, being a pilot. Uh, the same thing happens for scuba divers. You can get vertigo. And I know that what divers are taught, and I've heard that pilots are taught this too. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, divers are taught if you get vertigo and you can't seem to know which way the surface is, blow some bubbles and then follow which way they go. Unfortunately, there's a, there's a problem with airplanes, and that is that as they bank and turn, they set up their own Gs, whereas a diver is in a 1G environment with 1G always going the same way. The vector of that G-force is not necessarily straight down in an airplane. That's why you can't figure out where the pressure on your butt is, and that's down. 
um, you know, as you go into a curve like JFK Jr. did, you can actually be fooled and your head will tell you up is one way and your instruments will tell you up is another. But the bottom line is this guy is in level flight. He's just inverted and his oxygen mask is hanging straight up. That's because the vector of gravity is towards the ground. It has nothing to do with density or anything else. So right there, your entire flat earth gravity denial game is busted in that one shot alone in your video, Taboo Conspiracy. I don't know. You got anything else, Dad? Ned, just to say that I do love uh, self-debunking flat earth videos. They are great, aren't they? I mean, I live for those things. This, this is comedy that writes itself. But let's go ahead and continue on. But for an F-16 flying at 1,500 miles per hour, that would be a curvature adjustment of approximately 42,000 feet in just 10 minutes. But no pilot makes that ridiculous curvature adjustment. But think about the problem when an F-16 is quickly intercepting another aircraft coming from the other direction. Consider the unbelievable amount of curvature adjustments that would be necessary for an Air Force pilot on an intercept. And yet, Air Force pilots never learned about the curvature drop in training or otherwise, as confirmed by Mike. Well, Cliff, the reason that we don't quote-unquote learn about curvature drop is that it doesn't exist. And the reason that it doesn't exist is we fly an altitude above the ground. 40,000 feet at this point and 40,000 feet at this point over here follows a curved course parallel to the ground, but it's still 40,000 feet the whole way along. That's the definition of level flight. You maintain a level distance or altitude above the ground. So there is no curvature adjustment necessary. Aircraft climb up to altitude and use their engine power to maintain that altitude. They fly in a certain level of density that gives them the balance of lift to the weight of their aircraft to keep them in level flight. That follows a curving course around the surface of the Earth. I don't know. Any other thoughts? How about submarines? How do submarines work, Cliff? Yeah, and... and the, the parallel is, is real between those. So if you're in an aircraft and you're at 30,000 feet and you're flying, if you want to increase altitude, you have to add power. That's Ex just exactly. It's, it's just that simple. Um, some uh, flat earther, I can't remember who, I think it's the one that says that he was a meteorologist in the Navy when really he was uh, a weather guesser, as we call them, or, or an AG. Um, he said that submarines debunk the globe because in, in straight and level uh, sailing subsurface, you would surface. Well, no, because you have the same forces as an aircraft does. If you're at 800 feet and you're sailing you know, through the water, you're going to stay at 800 feet unless you do something uh, to change that depth. You're going to stay there because that's the pressure band that you're in aircraft submarine it's the same forces acting on it we call it a, a density altitude but a pressure band which is what you use with submarines is exactly the same thing we have a certain pressure gradient that we sit at i mean it's just simple as that and as you say unless we do something to change that we stay there you know the biggest problem that you run into with the flat earth is they are so invested in the idea that the earth is flat they seem to think that any movement on the surface of the Earth is in an absolute laser-like straight line. They can't conceive of the fact that you're following the curve of the Earth. So they would think that if an aircraft on a curved Earth was to fly along at 40,000 feet, as it went further, it would climb in altitude. Same thing with a submarine, 800 feet below the surface. If the submarine starts off at 800 feet below the surface and fly and, and sails in a perfectly straight line, it will rise in depth. It will eventually breach the surface and become an aircraft because it, if it continues to sail, it will start sailing above the ocean. This is ridiculous. Right. And that's a very good way to put it because 
if the surface of the earth is curved and you're on a, a boat on the surface and you're sailing straight, you would become airborne. If you think about their logic. Exactly. Uh, because, because they're not thinking of the forces that are up, that are operating on the, um, on the vessel to them, everything is just laser straight. And as far as what we were talking about with an aircraft flying straight and that it would increase in altitude, I can convince a child of that probably, but I don't know how an adult who has the time to think about it. And even a modicum of education could believe that after about four or five minutes of thought. Unless that is the basis of their understanding of the world and they cannot conceive of anything outside of that basis. And that's yeah, and the problem that, you run into. At that point, it's, it's dogma and you can't do anything to convince them otherwise. No. Well, I've been a little remiss with my channel, Bob the Science Guy, for the last couple of weeks. I've had some family business to take care of and I've been doing a lot of work with my other channel, Common Sense Science. Now, what I was waiting for was just a video that I could really sink my teeth into. And I think this is going to be it because we've seen evidence of gravity. We've exposed a fake fighter pilot with stolen valor. And we're going to continue doing this tomorrow with horizons, altitude, and start to touch on the F-16's radar system. We're also going to have a guest appearance by Wolfie6020. So I hope you'll join me. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. We have a new store and I've got a line of face masks for those of you that are looking for a reasonably priced and effective face mask. So until then, I'll see you around. Make sure you tune in tomorrow.